Hi sewing friends. So I know it's been a while, but there's a very good reason for that. Okay, so basically I have spent the last couple of weeks in like ultra hustle mode because I've been doing um, the beginners learn to sew course and um, putting it all together and make making sure it basically addresses everything that a beginner sewer needs to know. So I've got like different parts to this talk that I want to catch you guys up on. It's basically like, you know, a friendly little catch up. So first thing is the beginner's course. Second thing is um, my content being stolen on Instagram. And third is going to be about making the choice. I kind of teased you guys there. I quite like that. Didn't mean to, but did. So I'm just going to bring you down just a tad. There we go. So first part. Um, basically, I was talking with a bunch of uh, people at my co-working space. And we were talking about different um, ways to release this course. So this course has been in the works for about six months actively working on it but it's been an idea i've had for the last four four years i would say and basically my my intention with this course is to teach someone how to sew right and I'm just gonna get that little fleck off my glasses with this course it takes someone from absolutely never being on a sewing machine really scared new hobby, don't know what to do, what do I do? To sewing their first ever sewing project. And originally I was going to release it as one big course. However, um, in the market research I've done with you guys and listening to your feedback, um, I did a whole bunch of polls and questionnaires and whatnot. Um, I discovered that you guys um, only have around two hours a week to spend on your hobbies and also um, in your day-to-day -day lives if time is short your hobbies are the first thing to go so I've also realized that a finan there is a financial barrier to entry with a lot of things so from day one of my sewing patterns of my um, of my business model essentially for Ford is sewing. I believe sewing is a lifelong skill. It is like cooking. It is like riding a bike. It is something that I believe everyone should have access to. And I do not want financial, I do not want there to be a overwhelmingly impossible financial barrier to entry with sewing. Um, so with that said, I have now, I'm now adapting the course so that it's done in drops instead of one big chunk. Because, you know, if you look at it, like if you've only got two hours a week to spend on sewing, you don't need a big chunk all at once. So I'm going to release them in drops. So, and I'm going to have two payment options for this course. So you can either do a subscription month to month option or you can do a all-in-one upfront payment and get all of the course for that price. So it's going to be done in drops. So the first drop will be um, getting you set it up on your sewing machine, getting your um, foundational knowledge, like the beginner sewing toolkit, different types of fabrics, and learning about your machine. Then it's going to be um, getting you on your machine, threading your machine, your bobbins, different bobbin cases, different bobbin insertions, all of that. And then third is sewing your first stitch. So there's a lot in drop one. And then drop two is going to be more sewing techniques, etc., etc. And then you start to build up to your sewing project. So even in drop two, there's going to be um, some exclusive patterns to uh, the beginner sewing course. So I'm working on all of that, plus getting everything together 
which is filming it. Okay, can I tell you guys something? I really started ugly with my filming. I have done three rounds of filming, sometimes filming the same thing because I'm like, mm, my nail polish is chipped on that. Mm, the lighting's not right. Mm, I can see a bit of fluff in the background. So I have been filming, I would say for at least three weeks, putting this all together so that it is to the quality that I think you guys deserve. I know you guys deserve. So that's why I haven't really had the the time and the mental energy to do these kinds of videos. So that's kind of part one of this. Part two, content stealing. So also I have an update. I have an update. So about a week ago, um, two of two members of the sewing community tagged me in a piece of content and turns out another sewing content Instagram account had stolen a piece of my content and then re-uploaded it onto their platform. Now, this happens a lot, especially in such a niche as sewing. The problem I have with it is that the account did not tag me. So, I I commented on that post saying like funny how you how you um took my content and think that no one would notice I am the original creator of this content and I kind of left it at that and I never needed a follow up from them because this is something that's so just like, it happens all the time. It's a bad business practice, bad PR practice from an account to not tag the originator. People are gonna know, and people did notice. So what's the point? Anyway, so I kind of left it at that. And then, so, and then today, so like a week later, another person tagged me in that. No, they didn't tag me. They sent it to me. And they're like, hey, is this your content? And I, I was like, oh, it's another thing. And I went and looked and no, it was the exact same piece of content. And I was like, oh, it's okay. No problem. Like I know about this. But then I looked through the comments, the two people that tagged me in it originally, their comments were deleted, plus my other comment, and now I'm mad. I'm not mad, I'm more just like, no, 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 no. So I did message the account saying, I don't mind you sharing it, but to not credit the creator and then also delete the comments, not happy about it and you need to fix it. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. And this then leads me to the next part. So, Ford started after I finished university and it was a way of keeping myself accountable to sewing every single day. It has now morphed into a community of nearly three quarters of a million people, which is unreal. Considering my first year, I had 300 followers. I, I was going back through some of my old, um, what do you call it? old posts. I went right back to the beginning. And I did a post where I was like, so grateful that for the 170 followers that are on here. Like to go from like that a couple of years ago to this now is huge and and the way I, the way, the way that I view it is very different to a lot of other content creators because also the way that I view it as, so there's different ways that I view the sewing community, followers, social media, whatnot. I feel a strong sense of responsibility for you guys. I feel quite protective over the sewing community. Um, 
I believe that we do take care of each other. We, we take care of our own. And um, I think it's a very accepting, beautiful community that um, helps others. We are the helpers. And I've seen that so many times in, in not only my content, but also other people's content. Like, you know, I'll see a piece of content that says like, leave a comment um, if you're, if you um, got a sewing hack or like, what's your one piece of advice for beginners? And then the beginners will go through and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like the comments section are incredible. And can I just add in the four years that I have had Ford, I have only ha ever had two negative comments. Two. I think that's amazing. To only, and the comments are, the, uh, the way I view it is, I don't even I don't even recognize them as negative comments because how how can I recognize a comment that is negative when every other comment is beautiful? So I feel very protective over you, the sewing community. And the um, the other thing I love is how we all share knowledge. I think that's such a beautiful thing because there are people that have just started sewing and people that have um, been sewing for like 50, 60, 70 years. And it's a part of us. And the one thing I love is how it teaches you different skills and different ways of thinking as well. So for example, I, I have now become a lot more in depth and kind of seeing how things are constructed in a completely different way. I think it really changes your mindset around things, which brings me to when I first started Ford, I I would say conservatively, 95% of my wardrobe was fast fashion. Hands up, 95% of my wardrobe was fast fashion. And I used to consume a lot. I used to go out on the weekend and buy fast fashion. I used to go to, um, what's it called? Topshop. I don't even think Topshop's around anymore. Um, and I used to go to Glassons and I used to go to, I used to go to all the high, high street shops. I used to, you know, that's, that's how you had bought clothes. And it was only when I really started Ford and I got into the love, this is it, I loved creating it. I loved, I didn't do, I didn't sew so that I had something to wear. I sewed because I loved the process of sewing. And that is something that sewing gives back to you. There are two payoffs with this. There's the doing, then there's the wearing. And I think that's so beautiful. But in that, I learned how to respect my clothing and the memories that clothing holds and the emotional connection we hold to um, our clothing. And that makes it last so much longer. And it got me really thinking about the type of clothing that I own. And so goes to say that I would say that now I would probably say that 10%. 10% of my wardrobe is fast fashion. And I will, I will stand up in that and say, I still consume fast fashion. I do. And I'm never going to bury the evidence on that because I do believe that fast fashion does serve a purpose. However, it is a choice. Now, let me... <laughs> Let me explain. So fast fashion does serve a purpose in a economical and accessibility and um, trend. You know, it does serve a purpose. Um, a lot of people say, I can't afford to buy um, something that aligns with my values and morals and societal um, benefit. 
So something like an organic, fair trade, slow fashion, sustainable fashion garment that might be 10, 15, 20 times the price. I totally agree. I can't afford that. I can't. And I, I also, I don't want to isolate the people that are not in a position to purchase that kind of stuff. It is not about saying, oh, you, you wear fast fashion, gross. No, not at all, because it serves a purpose. So the analogy I kind of reiterate is you can buy a top in the fast fashion industry for $3. You know what goes into that. You know what goes into making that. Or you can buy a top in the sustainable slow fashion you know, section that's $80. If you're a waitress earning minimum wage or a single mum with five kids or just need some basic white t-shirts for a short period of time or whatnot, the fast fashion is, is more accessible to you than the um, more expensive um, t-shirts. And this is the, the kind of mental block and societal kind of shift I see happening is that I definitely believe there's a middle ground for that. I want to give people the choice to sew their own clothes, right? So um, there are some things I will always buy, like jeans, um, swimsuits, um, underwear. I do not sew my own underwear. I don't. I know a lot of people do, and I'm sure once you get it right, it's great, but I just, mentally, I just can't. I'm just like, no, I've had too many bad experiences and I just can't, but I'll get there eventually, I promise. Gotcha. Um, but, so for those things, I will go, I can go buy fast fashion for them or I can go sustainable and whatnot. So, like, I bought a pair of jeans the other week and I could have gone to Kmart and got them for $20 or I could go sustainable, eco-friendly fashion and whatnot. I know jeans for me, I will wear them a long time. I will keep them in my wardrobe for five to 10 years. It's worthwhile me doing this one. It's worthwhile me spending a bit more and it being a durable item for me and my wardrobe versus a white t-shirt that is prone to staining, prone to, um, you know, getting um, worn a lot more. Yes, I could go and get an $80 t-shirt, but I prefer to get one from a fast fashion three ten dollars because I know I'm gonna I I'm gonna wear through it very quickly. So you can see in both of those options I had the choice to choose either one of them. Now when it comes to other things like um I like a coat, I know I can make a coat, I would love to make a coat, I choose to sew my coats. I the last time I bought a coat or a jacket or anything of that nature was nearly a decade ago, right? Yeah, nearly a decade ago. So I have not had to step into the buying cycle of the sustainable slow fashion and whatnot or the fast fashion model for a decade because I know how to sew it. I know how to make it. And that is the choice I want to give to people. So, you know, my North Star is giving people that choice, that middle ground where they can go, yes, I can sew that and I will sew that. And that all starts with learning to sew. My, my North Star has always been giving people the choice. It is all about the choice because as soon as you make a choice, you take ownership of it. You go, no, I chose to do that. And it's no longer, I'm, I'm forced to buy one or the other 
due to the circumstances. You have the choice to choose one of those. So this is something I've been kind of ruminating about, thinking about, developing, because like I said, it's a lifelong skill. And if I, cause I, it's kind of like learning to cook. As soon as you start to make home cooked meals, you know, you know what's going into your body. You feel so much better about it. You take pride and you take joy from producing something of your own. And that is what I want people to feel when they make their own clothes, because it's such an important and rewarding, not only hobby, but life skill. And it's not about the product that you produce, but the process you go through it and learning about it. And it's that that I want to kind of share with people. And I want to share like the history of it. Like I have like so many ideas I want to go into detail with you guys, but you know, I just think that it is something so beautiful and I cannot wait to show you guys this. Like I am so, I am so, I, I'm proud of me. I'm so proud of what I've been able to do these last couple of months because like it has been something that's been on my mind for so long and it hasn't been easy. It really, really hasn't. And I'm finally doing it. And I had one of the best days of the year yesterday. And I felt so grateful to be in the position that I am. Not, not because of clout, not because of followers, not because of, you know, anything external, but knowing that I finally feel like I'm in the right place at the right time to make the difference, to actually use what I've learned. The biggest thing, the biggest thing I've ever come across that has really changed the way I see things is teach me and I will teach others. In, in the things that I do, like in life, you come across hard times in general, business, relationships, financial, educational. And I just think of it as a lesson or I'm just in training for when somebody else is going through this. So if I can put 20 years worth of sewing knowledge into something, into someone that then takes it on and they can they can live and act in alignment with who they are and the values that they stand for and take ownership of what they wear and how they how they present themselves and how they not present themselves as visually and how they dress but present themselves as what they stand for And that is something so much bigger than sewing and so much bigger than this, uh, just anything. Teach me and I will teach others and I am teaching you guys and I'm so, so grateful. And you know, if you got to this, we're nearly 25 minutes in, so if you made it this far, thank you. And I love reading the comments from you guys because they're so lovely. You know, I know that my mom watches these videos, so hi mom. But I know that so many of you guys also watch these videos and I would love to hear your stories down in the comments about like what is your favourite thing about the sewing community? What do you dislike about sewing? Because hands up, I really, what do I do? I would say I dislike ironing and like the in-between steps. I would say like changing my thread on was just like, oh my God, I just want to get on with this pre-washing. I'm just too excited. I just, I want to cut into it straight away. I'm naughty like that. But yes, if you, I just want to hear you guys, your thoughts, because in the past few videos, I had two lovely comments and it is me that replies, <laughs> you know, same on my Instagram. It's always me. If you guys take the time to comment, 100%, I will 
I will reply. I will always reply. It'll always be me. It's not AI, it's Annie. So I love you and leave you and live, laugh, love and learn to sew. I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye-bye.